the trenches, under attack, separated from the nest, and through this test, not all of us will make it back. Hey, uh, hey, uh, hey, family, welcome back to the channel. So I hope all is well with everyone out there, sending y'all some love and healing, and welcome to the new subscribers. You're going to have to do some catch up. So today I wanted to bring you a story about this cursing of the fig tree we have in the King James Version. Jesus cursing a fig tree. And let me tell you, this is a rabbit hole for sure. This leads to all the way back to the Garden of Eden. They talk about it. Um, just read that now. They say the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil was also traditionally held to be a fig tree because of the proximate reference in the book of Genesis, chapter 3, verse 7, Adam and Eve sewing together fig leaves to make clothes. Some commentators have used this connection to explain Jesus' cursing of the fig tree as Jesus attacking that which brought sin and death into the world. Right, so they connect this cursing of the fig tree back to the garden, um, and they also connect it to Israel. They say that uh, in the Jewish scripture, the people of Israel are represented as figs on a tree in the book of Hosea, or a fig that bears no fruit in, the, in Jeremiah. In Micah, it says the age of the Messiah is pictured as one in which each man would sit under his fig tree without fear. I just bought a fig tree this year, too. So, yeah, I'd be trying to grow everything and anything inside the house. And so this is my back porch. If you're wondering why I'm all bundled up, because it's autumn now and it's chilly in this house. And there's something wrong with my heater, so it's doubly cold but um but we're all right we got space heaters they're working on it too something wrong with the furnace but um <clears throat> yes it says that uh in micah 4 and 4 yeah there is a scripture about every man um, sitting under his fig tree without fear and so listen it says the cursing of the fig tree in mark and matthew and the parallel story in luke are thus symbolically directed against the Jews who did not accept Jesus as king. And it says something up here about the ones that didn't direct it against the Jews who had not accepted Jesus as Messiah. So they're saying that this cursing of the fig tree was symbolic and directed against these people that hadn't accepted Jesus as Messiah. So it's so it's connected from the past, the garden, going all the way through to the future. Because there's a lot of information on this cursing of the fig tree. Look, they say that this fig tree generation <laughs> is related to all the people who were alive on May 14th, 1948. It says right there, let me read it how it says it. The modern state of Israel was born on May 18th, for, uh, 1948. Those who were alive on that day constitute the fig tree generation. And Jesus said, assuredly, I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away till all these things take place. So they use Matthew 24. We're going to go and read these now real quick in the King James Version. They say that uh, the budding leaves and the fig tree of Matthew 24 is what represents the rebirth of Israel in 1948. And that's the modern state of Israel that's going on right now. So this is pretty serious, right? This story, because what's happening today as we speak in the world that's been going on ever since May 14th, 1948, the wars, right? So this is a big deal, and this story has many, many layers, many, many layers, and that's just a few. I'm going to tell you why I'm making this video now, because I have, I'm a part of some little seeing different chat groups now, and we were all talk, trying to come up with a song and some lyrics, and um, the question was asked, what was the most triumphant Megillah story that you've read so far? But I have at least 100 
of the most triumphant. And they're not just triumphant from the from what happened in the story. It's in my own life and in my own studies and where it brings me on my journey. And so one of the most triumphant Megilla stories in my life was the story of the Holy Babe and the journey of miracles. Now that comes to us out of the Megilla, um, chapter seven, about verse 414, is one of the last miracles that the Holy Babe performed. And it was a withered fig tree that the Holy Babe, Yahshua, he was like hours old. He reached out and touched it and it came back to life. It was youthful and laden with fruit, it says. I'm gonna read that real quick. So verse 414, <clears throat> I'm reading out of the Nazarene Bible of the Essene Way called the Holy Megillah. Behold, not long after leaving the village, the Holy Family found a hungry family by the side of the road. The hungry family had lost their home in a fire. They sat beneath a withered fig tree that no longer gave fruit. The homeless family was a husband and wife with three children. The man said, do you have food to share? The holy babe reached out and touched the withered fig tree and it was transformed. Behold, the fig tree was now youthful and laden with ripe fruit. The hungry family gave thanks and ate. He did a few more miracles for this family, but that was, that was major because all the time I knew, I remember I studied this because in the book of Matthew, it tells us to know the parable. Well, doesn't say no. It says, now learn a parable of the fig tree when his branch is yet tender and put it forth leaves. Ye know that summer is nigh. I wanted to show you guys. I made this video hours long. And so I'm trying to condense everything now. Look up the word parable because it comes from um, the Greek, I think, parabole, parabole. And it actually, you need to do etymology. And I looked it up in one of them old, big, big, heavy dictionaries. And it's a, it's a shape. It's like a cone and it means curve. So these red letters of Christ were curve balls that were going to come back around and hit us at a time when we would have been able to learn the parable of the fig tree where the leaves came forth and it started to bear fruit again, what he did in this Megillah, but we wouldn't have known it without the Megillah. <clears throat> so I hope you guys can follow what I'm saying is that these are some of the good words that were mixed into their scriptures that Lucifer talked about. That's something else I want to read too. If I don't get to it in this video, we're going to come into it to the next video and read about how some good words, which would be truth, was mingled and mixed into the scriptures so that the scriptures would be more palatable. And the religion of blood sacrifice would be, we, it would be easier for us to swallow. But there's some pen stronger than a knife stuff going on in this too, because I studied this for many, many years, took it back to Genesis, realized that yes, they're talking about what happened in the garden because they also teach that Eve was impregnated in the garden, according to these teachings. Now, I studied this when I was in what is called non-denominational. So I don't know if you, what type of church you've been in, or if you ever even heard about any of this stuff, but it's when you take it back to the Hebrew using the Strong's concordance, and you see what the words were, and you can see a different story, another layer to the whole Holy Bible. And that teaches about two bloodlines coming out of the garden. One was from Lucifer and the other was from Adam. And so that's what everybody thought this whole cursing of this fig tree went back to. That it, yes, it goes back to the bad seed, you know, the, the story of the wheat and the tares. So everybody would have been like, yes, they call this cursing of the fig tree, they call it a miracle because of that. The fact that they said he cut down that bloodline, you know, that's what Christ did when he came here. And, you know, if you've been studying in the Megillah, all of this is ringing a bell because they're telling us what Christ did, but in a roundabout way. But I'm just going to keep going and showing you this real quick. So. Like I said, they connected to Genesis, so it made sense. 
but then they used Matthew's words to talk about this generation and they made it into a future thing and they have some man-made, yes, man-made fulfilled prophecy is what's going on here. You cannot tell me that uh, the war and everything, unless this is one of the other things we were talking about in the group. So if you know anything about Yeshua's mission and in the, in the, and what he talked about when he trained, when they trained the 33 to go and proclaim Yeshua as the Messiah of peace, but Yeshua had some um, really important messages that were sent out by those 33. They were what was going to get recorded as who Yeshua was connecting him to this Aaronite Torah. But I always want to remind everybody in the Aaronite Torah that there was really no um, desire for a Messiah of peace. Their scriptures was talking about a warrior Messiah. And that's what's going on right now. We see the warrior Messiah. We see the nations that claim to profess cursing trees, killing trees, and sacrificing animals and humans as in the name of the Most High. But that's all propaganda and false. We know that. You can feel that. You shouldn't have to wonder if uh, death and destruction is from the Most High, the Creator. So all I really wanted to show you guys, and I'm going to make a part two so I can keep going. I wanted to show you that they use this story. And now that I've heard the true story, yes, I'm going to say that, that Yahshua brought a dead withered fig tree back to life versus this one, the only one that I knew that he cursed a fig tree. Did we read it where he, where it happened? I don't know. I wanted to show you guys so much stuff. So it's only recorded in Mark where we have Jesus walking up to a tree because he was hungry. And um, he says, it says, seeing a, tr a fig tree afar off having leaves, he came, if happily he might find anything thereon. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for the time of the figs was not yet. And Jesus answered and said unto it, no man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. Okay, so this is the only account in the King James Bible of him doing this. And then the rest are, are, are uh, parables. The one in Luke it's Jesus speaking a parable about a tree, a fig tree that hadn't bore fruit for three years. He said, cut it down. And then in um, Matthew, the only thing he really says is to learn the parable of the fig tree. And I felt like these words are talking to me right now. It's telling me when I see the story of the Christ touching a tree and the leaves springing forth, <laughs> know that the summer is nigh, <laughs> yay, <laughs> even at the doors. And so this is so awesome for me because, you know, I didn't, like, there was a time after studying with the King James Bible and the tools and living life that I felt like I was wasting time. But since finding the Megillah, there's this entire level of inner and over and understanding of all that we've been given and where it all fits, okay? So bear with me. I didn't do as good as I wanted to bring you these two stories side by side, but I'm just touching on the surface to just show you where I'm going with the next couple of videos. I wanna show you this Colt of Baal map. It's, it's really, really interesting. This guy, guys can go look up the map in the meantime at this website, www.deepstatemappingproject.com. He talks about how to overcome these dark magicians who have held our world hostage for centuries, we must study. <laughs> not fight, not pick up guns and knives. We got to study because they have used some hidden wisdom and they usurped it for their own advantage. So the more we learn about what they're doing and when they were doing it and how they were doing it, um, the more we'll be able to overcome this stuff because they're using us and our own thoughts, words, and deeds to do what they're doing. Look at when that Balfour Agreement, look what else was going on in the world. This is 1948, what was happening right then.
right here, Balfour Declaration. The UK promises Israel to Zionists in exchange for World War I victory. So the bankers had won at this time, 1913. We got the Federal Reserve. Even the sinking of the Titanic was, you guys got to get this map. I'll leave it up. We'll, it'll be what's on the screen for part two to this because it has a lot to do with this unfruitful fig tree and this cursing of the fig tree that in a roundabout way, we're being told about what Yeshua did when he cleansed that vortex. I'm telling you, it is all connected. You're gonna be surprised. But a lot of the stories I'm seeing in the King James Version are them. Of course, somebody went in there with a pen and changed some of the stuff so that we wouldn't be able to learn the parable of the fig tree. Because then we have in the book of Mark saying that, um, the only parable that we could have studied up until finding the Megillah was that the tree, the fig tree that was cursed and the fig tree that Adam and Eve sowed uh, leaves to and covered their privates. So that was the only information about a fig tree we had until uh, this story in the Megillah. And so I'm just trying to show you how maybe it's possible <laughs> that all scripture is good and for edification and we just need to know you know keep studying because they say that when that fig tree leaves start budding it's the rebirth of israel mm. which is beautiful the megillah talks about yisrael and yisrael and so there's so much to be said here i'm just trying to stay on the surface <laughs> all right Stay tuned. Under attack, separated from the nest. And through this test, not all of us will make it back. Repent, erase that back.